We shall be doing uh, Bethe ansads today. Um, it's a it's a technique, uh, rather exact technique to uh, solve a variety of problems. Uh, we'll only uh, talk about this uh, Heisenberg model, the solution of the Heisenberg model. So we'll give a, a short introduction to the Heisenberg model, and then we'll get ahead with this uh, Bethe ansad solution and uh, which consists of these uh, following steps that is uh, fragmentation of the Hilbert space is done uh, in the 0 magnon sector, 1 magnon sector, 2 magnon sectors and uh, arbitrary number of magnons. Uh, just to tell a little about this Bethe ansatz, uh, it is a very elegant uh, technique uh, which was uh, developed by Bethe in the year 1931. And, uh, uh, a variety of uh, many body problems uh, can be solved. Uh, let me just give an example of uh, or rather list out a few and uh, of course, we will not be doing all of them. So, the number of problems that can be solved are many and I will give a list of problems uh, say uh, the Young-Baxter equation. Um, then uh, the condo problem in continuous matter physics and uh, of course, what we will be doing the Heisenberg chain uh, Lieb-Leninger equations, the Lieb-Leninger model and uh, maybe the tongs uh, Girardeau gas and so on okay and uh, basically it's the the start of the quantum integrability uh, with this uh, Bethe ansatz solution it's a very elegant technique and in fact um, uh, when it was being proposed it probably was not uh, it was never thought that it would lead to this uh, exact solution, but it finally did and uh, so we will do this coordinate Bethe ansatz for the Heisenberg chain. And uh, in particular we will uh, assume uh, periodic boundary conditions. Uh, from now on, this class is going to be technical because uh, this is a technique. As such, uh, it uh, will not do any thermodynamics or not do any statistical mechanics, but we will learn how to solve a many body problem um, in one dimension exactly. Okay? So, uh, that is the whole idea and uh, just to bring the context, uh, you have studied uh, Ising model and uh, you have studied the solution of Ising model in one dimension and of course, the approximate solution in any dimension. So, to say say 2 and 3 dimension by uh, doing a mean field uh, approximation and uh, then you know using Landau's theory you have also studied this uh, Ising model. Uh, this uh, Heisenberg model is uh, a bit different than the Ising model where uh, the full SU2 symmetry of the spin operators are assumed. So, uh, S uh, the vector S is uh, not only the SZ component, but it has SX, SY and SZ component all three of them. Okay. So, uh, just to give you a, a bit of uh, uh, introduction to the Heisenberg model, uh, uh, that will illustrate the ansatz, uh, but to begin with the Heisenberg model, uh, let us say a little about that. And uh, so, these are mathematical preliminaries, you can keep it there. And um, it consists of this uh, commutation relation of spins, uh, where uh, alpha and beta are the components of the spin which are x, y and z 
and this can be written as epsilon alpha beta gamma uh, s gamma and uh, alpha beta gamma are nothing but x y and z. So, that tells you that uh, the components of the spin do not commute s x does not commute with s y or s x does not commute with s z and so on. And this um, alpha uh, epsilon alpha beta gamma uh, is called as a Levi-Civita symbol. And uh, this uh, acquires a value uh, equal to 1 uh, if alpha, beta, gamma are clockwise that is in this order. So, what I mean by clockwise is that if you draw a circle and so you write alpha, beta, gamma in this clockwise fashion and um, it is equal to minus 1 if uh, you break um, this uh, order is broken once and so on. So, basically if you have a beta alpha gamma it will pick up a minus sign and this is equal to 0 if uh, two of the indices are same. So, that tells you that uh, of course, we have taken h cross equal to 1 here. Uh, this is assumed throughout. So, we do not uh, worry about this h cross. So, we have a s x s y is equal to i s z and uh, uh, s y s z is equal to i s x and so on. Okay. So, all these commutation relations. So, none of the uh, components of the spin vector um, they commute with each other, but of course, uh, we know that they uh, commute with the s square operator and we will talk about um, representation in which s z is diagonal okay. that is uh, usually done. So, uh, now we are talking about uh, uh, s equal to half Heisenberg chain. So, s equal to half has this property that each of these uh, s x, s y and s z can be written in terms of the Pauli matrices. So, s x is equal to half sigma x, s y is equal to half sigma y and s z is equal to half sigma z. Uh, sigma x, sigma y are the Pauli matrices which are written as 0, 1, 1, 0. Uh, sigma y is equal to 0 minus i i 0 and sigma z is diagonal 1 0 0 minus 1. Okay. So, this is the uh, usual representation in which sigma z is diagonal and uh, we have uh, this uh, Hilbert space is actually two dimensional where the up spin is taken as 1 0 and the down is taken as 0 1. And uh, so, uh, any uh, generic vector can be written as uh, uh, c 1 uh, up plus a c 2 down. And if you see that uh, for uh, one spin of course, uh, uh, this has uh, two possibilities up or down. When you have uh, two spins, there are four possibilities and so on. So, there is a 2 to the power n um, that is the uh, dimension of the Hilbert space. We will just come into that. Uh, in just a while, but uh, in addition to these uh, sx, sy and sz, one talks about these um, raising and lowering operators which are written as a combinations of sx and sy in this particular fashion and uh, these s plus has a form which is 0, 1, 0, 0 and s minus has this form which are uh, 0, 0, 1, 0 and these are uh, also have uh, these uh, obey these uh, commutation relations as uh, s z with s plus minus is equal to um, plus minus s plus minus. So, plus sign will go with plus sign and minus will go with minus and uh, uh, s plus uh, s minus is equal to 2 s z and uh, in addition to that, 
uh, we can also define uh, how these, so uh, your SZ uh, acting on this up will give you a half uh, up. So these are eigenstates of that and SZ acting on down will give you a minus half down. And uh, then also we have this uh, S plus acting on up gives you 0. Uh, S plus acting on down will give you a up and S minus acting on up will give a down and S minus acting on a down will give 0. Okay? So, these are uh, basic operations that uh, one is familiar with and uh, uh, these uh, raising and lowering operators are of course, not the eigen uh, operators of these states but they are useful nonetheless. Okay, we will see how. So, uh, let me uh, write down this Heisenberg model. So, the Hamiltonian of the model uh, representing the model can be written as uh, H is equal to minus uh, J i j um, s i dot s j okay. and uh, we keep it as i j, but soon going to put a uh, uh, bracket like this or these angular brackets which means that i and j are nearest neighbors. So, that tells that is this j i j is uh, has a property that it quickly decays uh, with distance with i minus j and it is only uh, dominant for i and j to be nearest neighbors. And for a uniform model we can take this j out and this is just s i dot s j. So, distinguish it from the uh, this um, uh, Ising model that we have talked about where uh, these were scalar quantities and they only denoted the z component um, in Ising model whereas, in the Heisenberg Hamiltonian they have full uh, rotational symmetry. So, this is S i dot S j and we can uh, without any loss of generality we can assume uh, uniform interaction, uh, but if it is not uniform they will lead to more complications which we do not uh, want to talk about. So, uh, if you want to uh, see the limit, so the Ising Hamiltonian or the Ising model consists of uh, j x equal to j y equal to 0 and j z is equal to j. Okay? So, that is the thing that we have talked about. And um, as I said that these exchange integrals j, these j are called exchange integrals and they fall uh, quickly with distance uh, between the two sides i minus j and that is why we have kept this i j to be nearest neighbors. So, uh, in this particular sense j equal to 0, uh, this promotes parallel arrangement of spins. And uh, so, this is uh, ferromagnetism and for the other case that is j to be negative that uh, is anti parallel arrangement and uh, so the nearest neighbors are uh, anti parallel and this is anti ferromagnetism. Okay. So, these are some of the preliminaries of uh, the Heisenberg Hamiltonian and um, uh, so we write it uh, in 1 D, uh, particularly in 1 D we can write it as um, uh, with of course, periodic boundary condition H is equal to minus J and N equal to 1 to N S N dot S N plus 1. Okay. And, um, I say that the PBC which is a periodic boundary condition is assumed and we have to solve this model and this model cannot be solved exactly in anything more than uh, one dimension and we uh, strictly uh, talk about one dimension and uh, these are uh, the required uh, conditions or the required uh, uh, information has already been given. Okay. So, uh, this can be written uh, in terms of this uh, Sx, Sy and Sz, but particularly if you combine the Sx and Sy, uh, one can write it in terms of the S plus and S minus and that is crucially required for this uh, case. So, we write this thing as 
n of course I, I mean uh, 1 to n I just write it as uh, sum over n and now we have uh, s n z s n plus 1 z and the x and y can be manipulated just simple algebra uh, s n plus s n plus 1 minus plus s n minus s n plus this plus uh, and that is the Hamiltonian. Okay. So, we will work with this Hamiltonian and uh, try to solve it in 1D in periodic boundary condition. Okay. For one spin, uh, we have just two possibilities up and down. So, for two spins, we have four possibilities up, up, uh, up, down, a down, up and a down, down okay? uh, and so on. So, this is uh, 2 to the power 1 and this is 2 to the power 2 and so on. So, for n spins, the Hilbert space is actually 2 to the power n dimensional uh, space. Okay? So, there are 2 to the power n states that are present for n spins. And this is precisely the dimension of the Hilbert space. Okay? And uh, we have also said that by writing it in one dimension in this particular fashion, uh, if you look at it uh, or rather let us call it as equation number 1 and maybe uh, all these considerations that you see here as equation number 2. And uh, so, uh, of course, uh, n and n plus 1 uh, are neighbors and j only connects the spins at the neighboring sites. Okay. All right. So, uh, now what we do is that in order to apply the Bethe ansatz or, or rather introduce it, we do a fragmentation of the Hilbert space. And what I mean by that is that, uh, so uh, the Bethe-Anza's calculations are uh, facilitated by uh, taking uh, the, uh, the spin up states as a vacuum or the ground state, we call it the ground state. Okay. So, uh, the state in which all the spins are pointing up like this n spins, this is a ground state and let us call it as uh, equal to this ket gs, gs stands for the ground state. Now, what we do is that uh, we create uh, spin down excitations in this state. And uh, in particular, we uh, create one spin excitation uh, two spin excitation and uh, going this way, we create uh, n spin excitations. Let us write this as 3 and uh, solve for the spectrum in each one of the cases. Now, it is important to see that if you create one spin excitation on this ground state that is shown here. Uh, it is no longer uh, translationally invariant, but we still uh, wish to write it as a superposition of these uh, states and uh, calculate uh, the, uh, the coefficients or the amplitudes of that. 
particularly the amplitudes are not so important but what is important is the ratio of the amplitudes which actually can be written as a phase. So, the uh, even if we are talking about a non I mean an interacting problem a many body interacting problem we will pose it as uh, uh, the momenta of those interacting systems actually uh, as those of the non interacting systems that is the whole idea behind doing this uh, ansatz. So, we create these are called as uh, magnons. So, the spin excitations are called as magnons. Just like lattice excitations are called as a phonons, these are called as the magnons. Okay. So, uh, what is written in a 1, Roman 1 is called as a 1 magnon sector or 1 magnon state, then there are 2 magnon states and then there are um, say uh, let us not write n because n is a number of sides. So, let us write at r spin excitations which are called as a r magnon state any arbitrary number of magnons. Okay. So, uh, we will write down the ground state which we have already done, but just for the sake of completeness we will write this as a ground state where you have all of them to uh, I mean in the up orientation. And uh, this is of course, uh, this S z is equal to n over 2 that is the magnetization of the system. And um, so, this is we can call it as the r equal to 0 state and r equal to 0 r basically counts the number of magnons. So, it is a 0 magnon state and that is the ground state of the system. That of course, is translationally invariant, but uh, if you write down uh, r equal to 1 state okay uh, which is uh, one magnon state so this is equal to let's let me write it with n and this is equal to one of them is uh, down and this has magnetization equal to n by 2 minus 1 and this is a r equal to 1 state which is already state state and it is a 1 magnon state. Okay. So, similarly the r equal to 2 a 2 magnon state looks like n 1, n 2 and uh, we have a uh, down, down, up, up, up and so on. Uh, you can ask this question that why are these two magnons uh, neighboring to each other? They do not necessarily be. In fact, uh, we will actually distinguish between the situations in which the two magnons are far apart and the two magnons are neighboring to each other. So, this is S z equal to n by 2 minus 2 and this as said earlier this is equal to the r, my r equal to 2 states and then we can generalize it to r magnon states. Okay. So, um, this uh, can be written as uh, like for example, this can be written as S n minus uh, on the ground state uh, in that way this can be written as S n 1 uh, minus S n 2 minus is the lowering operators on the ground state. And uh, if you uh, so R magnon state can be written as or R magnon sector can be written as uh, N 1, uh, N 2 and so on. N R is equal to S N 1 minus S N 2 minus S N R minus acting on the ground state. Okay. And uh, let me all write these down as uh, say for example, uh, okay. so, so let me um, uh, not write this as uh, 2 or and maybe write this as 2, uh, write this as 3, write this as equation 4 and equation 5. Okay. So, these are uh, the main ingredients of our calculation 
and now we uh, would uh, look at the r equal to 0 uh, that is a 0 magnon state and find out the energy and that is pretty simple h acting on g s um, uh, you see the h has uh, two kinds of terms which are uh, one is the z and uh, the other one which uh, concerns with raising and lowering of spins. Now, uh, the ground state uh, would not allow uh, raising and lowering. So, H acting on the ground state will only have uh, these minus j and um, n equal to 1 to n uh, s n z s n plus 1 z acting on the ground state and this is nothing but each one of them like we have said that s z acting on up gives you half up. So, each one of them will do that and then there are n of them. So, it is a n j over 4 uh, and gives you the ground state and this is called as a ground state energy. So, E 0 uh, ground state where E 0 is equal to that is a ground state energy is equal to minus n j over 4. All right. So, this is uh, simple and uh, we now need to work on the r equal to 1 sector that is the 1 magnon sector. Once again what is a 1 magnon sector? It is a 1 spin flipped uh, compared to the ground state. And uh, we uh, need to take a, a operation of h on n and n appears here uh, n is equal to s n uh, minus 1 uh, s n minus that is uh, the lowering operator acting on the ground state. So, uh, now all the three terms uh, the z and the, uh, the plus minus terms they will uh, contribute to this and uh, so this is equal to h s n minus and the ground state and so on and this is equal to a minus j. So, this is equation number 6. So, this is minus j and uh, then we have uh, um, uh, m equal to 1, m is a dummy index. I do not want to put n because there is already a n here s n uh, minus. So, m equal to 1. So, we have this s m z s m plus 1 z um, s n minus g s that is the ground state and then uh, we have uh, uh, plus half uh, s m plus uh, s m uh, plus 1 minus plus s m minus s m plus 1 plus and uh, s n minus again acting on the ground state. Okay. And now you see that it would not be 0 because s n uh, minus is creating an excitation um, in the ground state itself. So, these uh, uh, things can uh, so this operation of these two terms can uh, very well be there. And um, so, what is the first term? The first term gives um, m s m z s m plus 1 z um, acting on this n or uh, n is nothing but uh, s n minus uh, and g s and this is equal to uh, you have to see it. Um, so, this is equation 7. So, this n by 4 minus 2 into half there are two operators and uh, each one on these uh, op acting on the uh, minus state will give a minus half. So, 2 into minus half and um, so, uh, when you have this uh, minus j multiplied to it, it will be a minus j and uh, so this is a minus j n by 4 minus 1. So, that is uh, let us call it equation 8 a. So, that is the first term and uh, we can write down the second and the third terms as this uh, you have to work out. So, uh, second and third terms. Uh, it is j over 2 because there is a half factor there. So, this sum over m uh, s m plus uh, s m plus 1 minus uh, acting on n uh, this gives you j by 2 n plus 1 and this is 8 b 
see this carefully and j by 2 acting on the other term the third term s m minus s m plus 1 plus acting on n will give another uh, j by 2 n minus 1 this is 8 c. So, if you look at the three terms uh, 8 a uh, that conserves uh, this number of uh, magnons this term conserves the number of magnons this uh, z term or the z component of this spins and uh, the plus minus will create uh, either create one more magnon or one less magnon as shown in 8 b and 8 c ok. So, uh, for these two uh, system for these two the last two that is 8 b and 8 c n is not an eigenstate of the system ok. And as I said that they give either one magnon more and one magnon less and it makes sense because uh, these one magnon state r equal to 1 uh, does not have the parent symmetry of the Hamiltonian which is translational invariance. The Hamiltonian has uh, say Galilean invariance, but uh, this one does not have uh, and that is why um, they uh, give you 1 n plus 1 and n minus 1. Uh, but the interesting thing is that that we should still be able to write down the states corresponding to these uh, one magnon sector in terms of the linear superposition of n ok. That is what the ansatz says. So, the ansatz said that uh, psi of k for some k uh, which we have to calculate the sum over n equal to 1 to n and some a n uh, where a n is an amplitude and this is a uh, this acting on this n. So, we make this ansatz even though we uh, know that uh, there are n plus 1 and n minus 1 sectors and that will be adjusted with the, uh, the amplitudes that uh, are uh, given in this uh, equation. So, psi of k that is the uh, solution uh, to the h psi equal to e psi uh, with h to be in the 1 magnon sector can still be written as uh, these a n and uh, this one magnon uh, you know states which are. So, n just to remind you is s n minus acting on the ground state ok. So, this is say equation 9. So, this is the answer and we have h acting on the psi of k um, this will give us e and a psi of k ok. Uh, let me not uh, give any assign any number to this. This is a Schrodinger equation that uh, this uh, uh, psi of k will satisfy. And if you put 8a, 8b, and 8c into this Schrodinger equation, we get this equation, or rather, this is a Schrodinger equation e minus e0 a n uh, equal to j by 2 uh, 2 a n, ok, and minus a n minus 1 minus a of n plus 1 ok. So, that is the uh, equation or that is the Schrodinger equation written now in terms of this amplitude a n ok. And um, one can assume a plane wave uh, solution of the form. So, this is 10 and uh, uh, assume a plane wave solution. Uh, which is a n equal to e to the power i k n and uh, what are the allowed values of k that can be understood if I assume the periodic boundary condition which is a n plus n equal to a of n and that gives that exponential i uh, k capital N um, should be equal to 1 uh, that is n plus n is equal to exponential i k n uh, that gives exponential i k n equal to 1 and that is uh, nothing but that gives uh, k is equal to uh, 2 pi over n and some integer which is the quantum number for the problem and since we have used m somewhere m here in this 8 a b c let me use uh, m prime as the quantum number and let me write this down here ok. So, m prime is the quantum number basically that uh, specifies the allowed values of k 
and uh, that can take values which are uh, 0, uh, 1, 2 up to n minus 1. Okay. So, that uh, gives the allowed values of k which is what we wanted. So, that allows us to write this psi of k which is in the ansatz. Um, now, this is the normalization 1 by root over of n uh, and uh, so this is exponential i k n n. Okay. Now, you see that um, that introducing this phase or the amplitude uh, which uh, appears in terms of this exponential uh, with some allowed values of k, this uh, is the eigen uh, function of the, uh, the Hamiltonian in the r equal to 1 or 1 magnon sector and uh, let us call it as equation 12. I hope we have numbered them correctly, uh, equation 10. Um, and uh, this as equation 11 okay. and this as equation 12. All right. So, uh, that tells us the energies can now easily be found out. So, energy can be found out as E equal to E 0 plus uh, J by 2 by putting this, uh, this psi of k that is 12 in this Schrodinger equation H psi equal to E psi and that is equal to 2 minus exponential minus i k um, minus exponential i k and so on. Okay. So, uh, this uh, gives E 0 which is the ground state energy plus j uh, 1 minus cos k. Okay. Uh, this is a remarkable result that is it is an exact result. Uh, with uh, E 0 being the ground state energy. So, uh, the total energy of the 1 magnon sector is equal to the ground state energy plus a term which has a dispersion like 1 minus cos k. So, if you plot uh, you know uh, this thing in the uh, 1 dimensional Brillouin zone, it, it looks like this. So, it is a 1 minus cos k. So, that is this part uh, uh, one can call it as omega k or uh, epsilon k and this is that uh, 1 minus cos k that looks like I have taken j equal to uh, some arbitrary number. Okay. So, uh, this is equation 13 and this is the solution of the 1 magnon problem. Okay. So, this is important using the ansatz that uh, your uh, n state can still be uh, written as under the action of the uh, Heisenberg Hamiltonian, it can still be written as uh, uh, a linear combination of these uh, one uh, magnon states which are n and these uh, a n that uh, uh, can be uh, expressed as uh, this exponential i k n with some allowed values of k which look like the free particle uh, uh, quantization. So, it is like a box quantization. So, uh, so that is the sort of you know uh, sort of in the 1 magnon sector that gives a, a, a nice uh, and exact result and how can this result be verified? One can do a neutron scattering uh, experiment. Um, now, neutrons are chargeless particles, uh, but they have magnetic moment. So, uh, and the advantage of this neutron scatterings are that that uh, uh, the energies are such that uh, that matches with the lattice uh, constant of solids uh, usually and uh, then the magnetic uh, moment of the neutrons that couple with the uh, magnetic properties of the material upon which it is uh, incidenting and uh, that gives the magnetic structure of the solid. So, uh, the magnetic nature of, uh, of various solids or various compounds can be obtained by doing neutron scattering. For example, uh, cobalt and copper has actually spin half. So, we are really talking about if you have a one, you can make a one dimensional chain and uh, do a, a neutron scattering experiment and then you would be getting this as the uh, one magnon uh, energies. So, uh, let us uh, look at the 2 magnon sector uh, which is going to be a little uh, technical and complicated, uh, but the basic idea remains the same. So, R equal to 2, uh, 2 magnon sector. So, we will do the 2 magnon sector and uh, uh, then generalize it trivially to the n magnon uh, because you will see that you will be getting the same results over and over again. 
for the energies and so on and also uh, the quantization that is the allowed values of k would also retain the sum of the allowed values of k would retain the form uh, which is valid for this uh, free particle uh, dispersion. So, we have a 2 magnon sector. Okay. So, uh, we have a psi now which can be written as uh, n1 and n2, I just leave it like that and just introduce a condition. Um, so, these are n1, n2. So, these states n1, n2 are 2 magnon states. So, uh, n1, n2 are uh, with a comma in between is equal to S n 1 minus S n 2 minus acting on the ground state. Okay? And we now have these uh, uh, amplitudes which depend upon the 2 magnons. Uh, now, uh, without any loss of generality, we can uh, assume that this uh, n 1 is less than n 2 that is n 1 lies to the left of uh, n 2. And uh, now, there are uh, as I said there are two uh, things that are possible or two uh, situations that are possible. One is that uh, two magnons are far from each other and uh, they are neighboring to each other. Okay. So, these are the two conditions and we will look at both the conditions. So, let us uh, see that they are um, far away from each other. Okay. And um, uh, so, what we uh, do is that uh, well, I mean in the sense that we will write them separately, but uh, really uh, we will combine these conditions that is 1 and 2 when they are far away and when they are neighboring to each other uh, for them to be valid for any n 1 and n 2. Okay. So, uh, the answer is that that a n 1 n 2 uh, is equal to something like a exponential i uh, k 1 n 1 plus a k 2 n 2. Um, so, here uh, either we have uh, uh, k 1 is to the left of k 2 and k uh, 1 is to the right of k 2 in that case your n 1 is always less than n 2. So, in that case you have this a n 1 n 2 uh, I must have missed some numbering something. So, let me go and uh, do that. So, uh, we have uh, this as uh, 14 and uh, maybe uh, write this as 15 because this is already known and uh, this uh, one would be 16. So, A n 1 n 2 is C 1 k 1 k 2 exponential i k 1 n 1 plus k 2 n 2 plus c 2 k 1 uh, well k 2 k 1 uh, we can simply call them as c 1 c 2 the dependencies are not uh, important. Uh, so, let me write this without these uh, explicit dependencies just c 1 and c 2 uh, exponential i k 2 n 1 plus a k 1 n 2. Okay. So, that is that is the answer for this amplitude and uh, now we can write down uh, this operation of the Hamiltonian again on this uh, n 1 n 2 state or the 2 magnon state and uh, we get uh, these equations which are uh, similar to this equations which we have obtained earlier 8 a 8 b and 8 c. Now, uh, they are uh, 17 a 17 b and 17 c and let us see what they are. So, uh, again these terms uh, which are um, so these are s m z uh, 
S M plus 1 Z. I am writing it without the J term and can be put it later. Uh, this uh, N 1 N 2 this is equal to n by 4 minus 2 into 4 by 4. You have to see carefully uh, why these coefficients come uh, and this remains uh, this uh, keeps it invariant. Um, so, this is uh, uh, 17 a. So, this uh, the positions of the magnons remain unchanged. Okay. So, this is uh, 1 uh, which we call at 17 a uh, and now the raising and the lowering operators we have m equal to 1 to n s m plus s m plus 1 minus acting on n 1 n 2 it gives you uh, n 1 plus 1 n 2 and plus n 1 n 2 plus 1 this is 17 b. So, that makes uh, basically the magnon well I mean the first magnon moves to the right uh, to the right by one side and uh, third. Uh, so, let us call this I uh, will have already named them as 17 b and uh, then the last term which is uh, S m minus S m plus 1 plus uh, n 1 n 2 this is equal to uh, n 1 minus 1 n 2 plus n 1 n 2 minus 1 and this is 17 c and the physical interpretation of that is that the first magnon uh, moves to the left. by one side. Okay. So, uh, we have obtained uh, these uh, equations which are similar to the ones which were obtained uh, in 88 B 8 C uh, for the 1 magnon sector. Now, these are for the 2 magnon sector and uh, we can uh, put it in the Schrodinger equation putting them into uh, H psi uh, E psi we get the two magnon energies as E minus E 0. Um, so, A n 1 n 2 is equal to j by 2 2 A n 1 n 2 uh, minus A n 1 minus 1 n 2 minus A n 1 plus 1 n 2 um, minus a n 1 n 2 minus 1 uh, minus a uh, n uh, 1 n 2 plus 1. Okay. So, that is the Schrodinger equation that you get and uh, uh, so again uh, if you solve uh, equation uh, this is equation what equation 18 this is equation 18. So, solving equation 18 one gets uh, with these uh, the answers that one makes uh, here uh, a n 1 n 2 uh, one gets uh, this as uh, uh, e minus uh, e 0 ok. So, e equal to or e equal to e 0 plus j uh, 1 minus cosine k 1 minus cosine k 2. So, it is essentially the same uh, form that we have obtained earlier uh, excepting that now instead of just one magnon there are two magnons and then there are two um, uh, wave vectors k 1 and k 2 which need to be determined. And uh, this is uh, not a very easy task, but it has to be done and um, uh, there could be numerical solutions of this k 1 and k 2 and let us call this as equation 19 
and uh, we uh, know that the k1 and k2 have to be determined. And this is an important task that we have at hand. Uh, we have seen earlier that uh, these uh, uh, wave vectors they actually look similar to the uh, ones that are for the uh, non interacting problem. And uh, let me uh, now go and uh, do the, uh, the second case, uh, which is uh, the two magnons are neighboring to each other. So, that is the second case. Okay. So, um, for that to happen, uh, we can assume that n 2 equal to n 1 plus 1 and we keep n 1 to be less than n 2 as we have uh, taken earlier. Okay. So, again these uh, equations which are uh, these sum over m, s m, z, s m plus 1, z, uh, n, n 1, n 1 plus 1. So, this is equal to n by 4 minus 1 and we have uh, n 1, uh, n 1 plus 1. See the n 2 has been replaced by n 1 plus 1. So, this is equation 20 a and uh, then the raising and the lowering operators uh, s m plus s m uh, plus 1 minus uh, n 1, n 1 plus 1 is equal to n 1, n 1 plus 2. Uh, so, this is 20 b and uh, finally, we have the last term which is s m minus s m plus 1 plus uh, n 1, n 1 plus 1. This is equal to n 1 minus 1, n 1 plus 1 and this gives you a 20 c. So, these are uh, the equations uh, operation of the Hamiltonian on various terms when you have n 2 equal to n 1 plus 1 and uh, the Schrodinger equation reads as uh, E minus E 0 uh, A n 1 uh, n 2 this is equal to uh, j by 2, um, 2 a uh, n 1, um, I write it as n 2 which means it is n 1 plus 1 uh, minus a n 1 minus 1 n 2 which is nothing but n 1 plus 1 uh, minus a n 1 n 2 plus 1 which is nothing but n 1 plus 2. Okay. So, uh, these are uh, the equations uh, that is this is the Schrodinger equation for the 2 magnon sector and um, uh, once again um, for arbitrary uh, C 1 and C 2 uh, with the ansatz that we have made in this equation that is uh, in equation 16. So, one gets uh, the two magnon energies again as E equal to E 0 plus J uh, 1 minus uh, cosine K 1 minus cosine K 2 and this is basically same that same as that what we have obtained earlier. Now, uh, if you subtract um, these two equations that is equation uh, 21 from equation 18. Uh, by putting uh, n 2 equal to n 1 plus 1. Uh, so, one gets n conditions So, we have uh, uh, a n 1 n 1 uh, plus a uh, n 1 plus 1 n 1 plus 1 equal to 2 a n 1 n 1 plus 1. Okay. 
So, this is equation 23. Now, this is actually valid for uh, any uh, n 1 uh, I mean there is just n 1 dependence in this equation and uh, if you insert equation 16 that is the Ansad's equation into 23. So, insert uh, equation 16 into equation 23 uh, then what one has is that the C 1 by C 2 is equal to exponential i k 1 plus k 2 uh, plus 1 minus 2 exponential i k 1 and uh, this is exponential i k 1 plus k 2 uh, plus 1 minus twice of exponential i uh, k 2. And it can be checked that this has uh, unit modulus and since they have unit modulus one can write it as exponential i phi where phi is given by uh, uh, so uh, one can actually uh, sort of uh, write it as c 1 equal to exponential i phi by 2 and c 2 as exponential minus i phi by 2. I just repeat that uh, one can check that this is unit modulus and because of that it, it can be written as uh, the amplitude being 1 and a phase factor which is exponential i phi uh, that allows us to write uh, c 1 and c 2 as uh, uh, this exponential i phi by 2 and exponential minus i phi by 2. Uh, so, this is uh, equation 24 and this is equation 25 and um, uh, now uh, we still have to find the k 1 and k 2 the allowed k 1 and k 2 that uh, satisfy this equation. Um, the Schrodinger equation and uh, so then a n 1 n 2. So, this is the Ansatz um, uh, Ansatz become equal to uh, exponential i uh, k 1 n 1 plus k 2 n 2 uh, plus phi over 2. See it was c 1. So, c 1 was in the exponential. So, it uh, enters into inside the argument of the exponential and it is exponential i k 2 n 1 plus a k 1 n 2 uh, minus half of phi. So, that is the a n 1 n 2 where uh, these uh, phi and k are related by uh, cot of. Uh, so, this is 26 uh, cot of phi by 2 uh, this is equal to half of uh, cot of uh, k 1 by 2. Uh, minus cot of k 2 by 2. So, that is the relationship between uh, phi and uh, the k 1 and the k 2. Let us call this as equation 27. Okay. Uh, we are nearly done um, except that we have to still find what are these k 1 and k 2. Um, and uh, so, uh, we uh, know that apply the periodic boundary conditions which we have uh, and that is uh, has a structure. So, a n 1 n 2 is equal to a n 2 n 1 plus 1. Uh, you have to understand this because n 1 is less than n 2 and when we do the periodic boundary condition. So, n 1 is connected to n 1 I mean n 2 would be uh, connected to n 1 plus n and uh, then n 2 uh, uh, becomes uh, lesser than n 1 I mean uh, the, than this n 1 plus n. Okay. So, uh, this is the boundary condition let us call it as 28. So, if you insert 28 into uh, 26 um, inserting uh, equation 28 into 26 uh, one gets this exponential i um, uh, k 1 n 1 plus k 2 n 2 plus phi by 2 uh, plus exponential i k 2 n 1 plus k 1 n 2 minus phi by 2 uh, equal to uh, exponential i uh, k 1 n 2 plus k 2 n 1 plus n plus phi by 2 uh, plus exponential i 
k 2 n 2 plus k 1 n 1 plus n minus phi by 2. Okay. So, this is equation uh, 29, uh, this is 28. So, this is the inserting uh, this equation 28 into 29 and uh, this must be true for all n 1 n 2. So, the what are the self consistency condition or what are the condition on uh, k 1 and k 2? So, these are given by n k 1 has to be equal to this uh, quantum number m 1 prime plus a phi uh, and n k 2 um, is equal to a 2 pi uh, m 2 prime minus a phi let us call it as 30 a and 30 b. Uh, and these two equations are actually quite uh, complicated because your m 1 prime m 2 prime uh, they uh, take values. Uh, so, both of them take values 0 1 up to n minus 1. So, uh, the only good thing is that uh, that k 1 and k 2 individually do not have the form. Uh, Uh, that is 2 pi uh, say m prime over n uh, this form, uh, but uh, k 1 plus k 2 which is say k that has this form which is equal to 2 pi over n m 1 prime plus m 2 prime where m 1 prime and m 2 prime are the uh, quantum numbers that can take values from 1 to n minus 1. So, again the total k uh, that satisfies uh, a condition which is similar to that of the uh, this free particle problem. Okay. So, again it looks like a, uh, it's a reminiscent of a free particle. So, I want to draw your attention to uh, one more fact that uh, equation 30 a and 30 b are uh, quite difficult in the sense that uh, what values will satisfy uh, uh, k 1 and k 2 have to be uh, found out and what are the relationships between k 1 k 2 that is not very clear. Uh, in fact, uh, it is I will just cite the original paper by Bethe which said that the uh, k 1 and k 2 uh, have to be complex conjugate of each other so if k1 is of the form u plus iv uh, k2 has to be of the form u minus iv in order for uh, one to arrive at a sensible condition. In fact, uh, it can be shown that k 1 equal to k 2 is uh, not a, a valid solution or not a sensible solution. Okay, I leave that uh, proof. Uh, in any case, we have arrived at the, uh, uh, the final result uh, or rather the energy which simply looks like uh, uh, this uh, equation 22 which is E 0 plus j 1 minus cos k 1 minus k, cos k 2 irrespective of whether the magnons are neighboring to each other or they are far away from each other. Okay. And uh, just uh, uh, a back of the envelope extension uh, to the r magnon case. So, it is arbitrary r I will not do uh, a complete analysis of that. So, this is arbitrary number of magnons. So, uh, one can uh, write down such a state with arbitrary number of magnons as uh, n 1 less than n 2 less than n 3 and so on less than n r and this is equal to this uh, amplitude n 1 n 2 uh, n r 
uh, and n1, n2, and so on, nr, okay, uh, which of course obeys the boundary condition a uh, n1, n2, um, nr is equal to a n2, um, n3, nr. Um, n1 plus n that is the boundary condition very similar to the one that we have done it for the 2 magnon sector and uh, one gets again we do not do it explicitly, but we have done it till a uh, 2 magnon this is equal to E equal to E0 plus J uh, I equal to 1 to R, R is the number of magnon and it is 1 minus cosine K I. Okay. So, let us uh, do the same thing for arbitrary number of magnons where we take uh, this r to be arbitrary uh, where uh, the wave function can be written as uh, this amplitude again n1 to nr uh, and the state which contains n magnons and uh, just to uh, sort of write that n1 n2 nr uh, is equal to sn1 minus sn2 minus and so on snr. Uh, minus acting on the ground state okay? and uh, where these uh, the periodic boundary condition uh, that demands that a n 1 n 2 all the way up to n r has n 2 n 3 n r and then n 1 plus n and one would get again uh, the same dispersion that we have obtained uh, where E equal to the ground state energy and then the magnon energies which appear as 1 minus cos k i and uh, sum over i, uh, i going from 1 to r and uh, these uh, uh, k i's are obtained from uh, uh, n k i is equal to 2 pi m i prime plus uh, this phase phi i j where i is not equal to j. And um, uh, again, you know the total uh, k which is equal to the sum over uh, k's that obeys the free particle dispersion or the free particle condition which is i equal to 1 to uh, 1 to r rather and this is equal to m i prime, m i's are the uh, quantum numbers. Okay. So, um, where phi i j that is the last step that we do the phi i j's are given by um, e to the power phi i j is equal to uh, e to the power i k i plus k j uh, plus 1 minus 2 e to the power i k i divided by uh, e to the power i k i plus k j plus 1 uh, minus e to the power 2 i k j and so on. So, um, at the end of the day uh, this is the technique okay, and the technique actually uh, is applied it is called the coordinate Bethe Ansatz. Uh, it is applied to uh, uh, 0 magnon and 1 magnon and 2 magnon sectors and then generalize it to R magnons and uh, uh, even though the 1 magnon, 2 magnon etcetera not the eigenstates of uh, uh, these uh, n state. Okay. Um, and uh, but still uh, they can be uh, written as a superposition of these uh, n states and uh, and then the amplitudes etc they are being found out and these amplitudes uh, come as uh, the phase so basically the many body interaction that are embedded into the system they actually uh, enter through these phases which are this phi ij and that's how uh, one actually arrives at the um, at the exact solution for magnons in a 1D Heisenberg chain under the periodic boundary condition. Uh, just want to reiterate again that we have not done any statistical mechanics, but one uh, simple 1D many body interacting problem uh, has been solved exactly by using uh, the technique of Pethe Ansatz. I will stop here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.